a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on beastofwar.com. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastofwar.com. Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box. Myself and John are unboxing a thingy. It's what, a, is, what is this thingy? This is a very good thingy. This is finally... <laughs> Drum roll please as we say hello to Charlie's Chieftains. This is the Iron Maiden starter box for Team Yankee. And look at them. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm finally glad they're here. That what? voice! What? That was creepy. Which voice? The, the, the They're finally here. Finally here. <laughs> okay, that would destroy me. <laughs> so what we get in the box is five chieftains mm -hmm. and two Lynx helicopters. Okay. Uh, plus uh, your stack cards and so on. So you better just open it. Open it! <laughs> okay. Ooh, there's a new thingy. Yes. You now, rule book. You now get a mini rule book in the box. Nice. Uh, which we covered on the Weekender segment where we first got these and I wasn't allowed to open them. <laughs> yeah, I missed that weekender. I'm yeah, sorry. You did. You were busy. You kicked us out. Rude. I had things to do. Yep. Uh, also, stat cards. Of course. It's one of the things I like about Team Yankee is that everything is on stat cards. It makes yep. building your forces just a lot easier. So, yeah. I'll quickly flash through these. Mm -hmm. So, you've got your links. Links transport. Toe links. Toe, toe links. Toe Ooh. links. Uh, we've then got the Armored Squadron card. Mm hmm. Chieftain. Yep. And. Chieftain. Yep. Uh, one of those is your HQ, I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. So, uh, not a lot to really overly confuse you in the box. You've got no. two types of unit to start mm -hmm. playing around with. Uh, what do you want to show off first? Uh, we'll do the links first. Okay. I think. We'll... Okay. Now, the links, this is a very iconic piece of British military, yeah? It's definitely one of the, the more popular um, helicopters the British ever used. All right, well, gorgeous. Uh, let's jump straight into it. Mm -hmm. So. Down the bottom, we've got our twin rotors. Yep. We've then got our main body, other half of the main body. What's the main body actually called, Justin? Canopy? Fuselage. 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 There we go. Okay, better. we're doing that bit again. Yep. Okay, uh, we've then got a winglet. Yep. Tail we've thing. then got the landing skids. Yep. We've then got these. What are these? Uh, they are mounting po uh, parts for the uh, missile system. Okay. Uh, tail rotor. Mm -hmm. Missile system. Yes. And I assume these go on the chin. No, these are tops of the canopy. So um, if ah. you if you're running the links as a transport, you take the the plane looking one. Ah, and I see. If you're running the two missile one, then you have the aiming radic the aiming sight and stuff. For gotcha. It. And then base base of the main rotor. Okay, so that's the links. Mm -hmm. Details are really nice and crisp. Very tidy. Yeah. Uh, in game, do we have any idea how it's going to run yet? Um, I'd say it'll probably run very similar to the, um, if you're taking the missile system on it, the, the PA helicopter that we were checking out with the Germans. Yeah. Sort of that low down thing pops up to shoot then drops down again. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, well, I'm wondering, the transport variant, that's going to be a nice thing because mm -hmm. you're going to be able to move your troops anywhere on the board and drop them really, really quickly. Yep. So your opponents are going to have to watch out for that. Yeah. So you have the option of taking it as an anti-tank helicopter or you have the option of taking it almost to run like the Russian Hinds, where it's like a, a nice hefty mm. transport. What are you checking out? Oh, I'm just, I'm looking, you'll have to buy some infantry to do this. So in the box, you're best buying the, or building the tow variant. Yeah. Because you don't have infantry in the box to use it, but it's nice to have that card so you mm -hmm. can look at it and go, hmm, well if I'm buying this along with it, aha! Uh -huh. Exactly, and if you have the book, Ta -da! it gives you all the options in there for how, what the Lynxes can transport. All right. Uh, let's jump straight into the big baby of this. Calm the, down. The chieftain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start having a look through the sprue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, down the bottom here, we've got two machine guns. Yep, GPMGs. Yep, main gun. The L11-120. Alright, uh, we've got a couple of baskets for the turret. Yep. What is this? Uh, that is the side uh, infrared spot lamp. Okay, oh, with the door on it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, then we've got a couple of Kapolas. Yep. A couple of jerry cans. Mm -hmm. uh, a box. A box. Uh, part for the turret. Yep. And this, I'm guessing, is a back rear? panel for the turret. Okay, back panel for the turret. If you really want to know, that's where your M NBC filtration system is. Okay. Uh, then you've got the tracks. Cast yep. two simple nice pieces. You've got the side skirts. You've mm -hmm. got the lower hull. Mm -hmm. You've got the lower part of the turret. You've got the rear of the lower hull. Yep. 
upper hull. Yep. And then you've got two variants of turret. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing this would be the Stillbury one because it's got more weight to it. Yeah. So the Stillbury was basically a giant piece of armor. It was an armor package put on the Chieftain in mm -hmm. the mid 80s, I believe they say in the book anyway. Yeah. To make him a bit more formidable because although the British Army had invented Chobham armor by this point, yeah. we hadn't yet used it on a tank. The Americans were the first to use it. I uh, see. So Chieftain. Or Challenger was the first tank we used with Chobham. Right, and then but... Abrams was there first. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, the other things you get in the pack, you get a little pack of decals and some magnets. Mm -hmm. These I think are fantastic because it gives you the option that you can either magnetize your aircraft to their bases or you can magnetize your turrets to your tanks. Yeah. Uh, for myself, I honestly prefer magnetizing turrets to tanks. Yes. Because I think it's, it's just nicer. It keeps them in place mm -hmm. and you can just pop them off. Uh, as well as that, you get this, of course, which is your big artillery template. Yes. Which can be scary as hell. It's nice that they include this even without artillery because you're always going to need these. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, we get a little set of crewmen. Yep, and these are little resin crewmen for your tanks. Yep, so I'm guessing you'll put a few of these on, John. Oh, yes. Definitely. And the last thing you get is, of course, your flight, flight stand. stand for your helicopter. Mm -hmm. Right, so overall, what are we thinking for this force? Nice, light. Or is it very elitist? Um, when I've, I've been looking at the book and looking at the contents of the box, you can get uh, you can get a squadron HQ of two chieftains, uh -huh. and you can get one troop of three chieftains. So okay. you've, you've already got a decent mobile force there already, plus you have your two helicopters and support. From the way I understand the build, you're going to have to go the other way around. You're going to have to go with one HQ and two sets of two for the chieftains, because otherwise your morale is going to be done in. There is that, yeah. But if you're planning on expanding on this immediately, yeah, you're not there's so units you've got straight out of the box that are yeah, decent. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I would say anybody, if you pick up two of those, you've got a nice sized force to get you kicked off. And yeah. And you can start adding the specialist bits in. Yeah. Uh, right, tell you what, uh, John, because it's tanks, I'm sending you a way to build it. Back in a minute. So, how was the build? Oh, the build was gorgeous. <laughs> they're good to put together then? They are, yeah. They're just they're as good as the um the Russian mm. uh the T seventy twos. They're yeah. they're they're actually easier than T seventy twos. Really? I think there may be a couple less parts here and there in them, especially and mm. and with Abrams, like I think these might be a bit easier. Alright, well let, let's not keep everybody waiting. Let's mm -hmm. get them under camera in all their glory. So There we are. There we go. It's yeah. very, very nicely designed. Mm -hmm. Uh what's this? I'm seeing two empty baskets here. Have you done this deliberately? No, that's the way they're meant to be. Well, I haven't put any stowage on yet. Yeah, because you have those little jerry cans and stuff in there. Yeah. And yeah, I'm seeing this sort of infrared. Uh, this just seems like a bad idea. Why have a lamp and put a door in front of it? Um, aha! The cogs are turning and I just remembered. Okay. Um, before, before infrared became really decent, yeah. they had to use um, carbon lit spot lamps. So, so hang on. I'm viewing you in infrared, but I have a spot lamp on you anyway. This is before infrared became really widespread. Okay. Before that, how did you see it at night? Well, you didn't see it at night. So they had these things, this, these spot lamps on them, and they're basically like, they're either a huge big filament, or sometimes they're two carbon rods that are pushed together and burn like a welder's torch. Okay. The problem with that is that when you switch the light off, it will glow for five minutes. So that's why you have the door on that there. That door is a quick latch door. Okay. So it opens, punch your light on, punch your light off, shut the door, or just shut the door with the lamp still on. That way... I'm it's guessing a, this technology needed to advance a bit from here. Yeah, well, later, when infrared became more widespread, especially in Chieftain, they put an IR filter over that lamp. Yeah. So that the visible light was reduced, but the infrared was quite a powerful beam. Ah, uh, see. So Again, you still were faced with the same problem of, if I'm looking at you with infrared, um, I'm still going to see that lamp after you switch the power off to it, so hence the door. Oh, but whenever the lamp's on, can you not see it? Well, yes, but you're trying to reduce the amount of exposure you're giving yourself. Yeah, I suppose. So if you flip the door open, fire fire the lamp on, take your shot, turn the lamp off, close the door, mm. and re-maneuver? More or less, but uh, I've listened to a bunch of chieftain vets talking mm. about when they were doing night training in Germany. Yeah. And so what you actually figured out was that you as, let's say, a troop leader of, right. of three chieftains, you as troop leader would light, would use your light to light a target. Right. Your number two would fire at the target, you'd switch off, then the next one up the line would fire his light, then ah. the troop commander would fire. That's clever. So 
Because they basically went, well, if the enemy sees an IR light, they're going to fire at it first. Yeah, so let's have the shot come from somewhere else. So yeah. even if they see a muzzle flare from there, they're left going, oh, there's more out there. Yep. All right, next up. Lynx. Lynx. Glorious Lynx. They are such a sleek looking helicopter for they the are. time. Really right. nice looking stuff. I always love when these turn up to the local air show. Mm. Now, you have built the, the tool missile variant. Yes. I always think the tool missile is a bad idea. Why? It has a cable running out of the back. It's wire guided, so. It's just, you're going to have wires all across the battlefield. They're like this, the, the width of a human hair, though. Oh, right. And there's two of them. There's like practically. You'll not notice unless you run through one and right. go, oh, that's like a spider's web. Okay. okay. But that, that's all it is. There's not much there. Yeah. But I mean, like, once you have the two of them built and together, they do look a little bit mean. They are quite mean looking, considering they don't look individually mean. <laughs> well, it's. It's the whole thing of, oh, look, I'm flying around with a tool missile. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, hang on, let me grab the cards. Because I want to see what the stats on the tool missile are, just mm -hmm. for my own curiosity. Transport and... Notice I haven't tool. waxed lyrical yet. No, you have not. I'm so, waiting for my cue. Oh! Go okay, on. improved tool missile. Ah. Eight inches to 48 inches. Mm -hmm. You have to be halted to fire it. Yep. Anti-tank 21, and it's a three-plus firepower. Mm-hmm. That's going to kill a thing. That is going to kill a thing. Certainly. Okay, um, do you want to wax lyrical? Right, what would you like? Let's let's do this as a Q&A session, shall we? Do you want to ask a question and I'll try and form an answer? Okay. Um, do you like the, the chieftain? That's a terrible question. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting me on the spot here. All right, what were the advantages of chieftain? Okay. Okay, so... Chieftain came out in the 60s, roughly the, the late 60s. Mm. She was sort of the first generation British tank we had after Centurion, which was like, let's put every piece of new technology we've gained over the last 10, 15 years. So the, the ultimate life extension program. Yeah, chuck it into, uh, into a new tank and we'll mm. run with that. Because Centurion, even though it didn't finish service with every army in the world until, oh wait, no, it's still in service in some places. Really? Yes, yeah, so there are still a few chieftains clunking around in Paris. Have we stuff. not seen these come to the Port Rush show and actually have it break down while sitting still? Yes, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> so the advantages Chieftain brought to the table was it was the only NATO tank at the time, forgive me if I'm wrong with this, that had a 120mm gun. Okay, so bigger cannon. Yeah, so at the, at the time of Team Yankee, the Abrams were basically puttering around with um, the Centurion's last type of gun, the L7-105. Okay. Uh, the Germans are still on 105s with the Leopard 1s. They're moving to 120s with Leopard 2s as you get in their box yeah. set. Um, Chieftain was basically the British mindset of going, well, we were kicked around a lot during the Second World War in our Cromwells and Churchills because the Germans had tigers and panthers and mm. all sorts of big jungle cats running so at us. Let's do that. Yeah, so they... they Basically went with the um, qual they they went with the German philosophy philosophy of quality over quantity. Yeah, we didn't build a lot of chieftains. I think well, I say not a lot. We probably had a few thousand. I don't know the numbers, mm. but these things were individually being specifically designed to take on at least ten to fifteen T fifty fives. Ah, I see. On one on one combat, so one chieftain could sit there and go, "I can dun, take dun, out dun, dun, dun. this many tanks before I'm either hit or have to retreat." Yeah, and I'm I'm guessing the the armor on it. I mean, like just even looking at the lines on this thing, mm. if you have this thing front on, and you actually try and hit it, you've got this big flat panel at the front, a wedge down the bottom. So mm -hmm. that thing, chances are, is going to scoop off here, maybe hit this bit of a rim, yep. and then punch on up over the the, over the turret top. face. Yeah, you know, so the the sloping on the armor for deflection alone looks really good on this thing. Yeah, the the only thing with that is that yeah. It's got good armor, mm. but it's standard armor. It's sort of like... It's oh, just... right, so you built all of these as standard variants? Yes, I haven't put still brew on these. Mm. And okay. there's, a, there's a reason I'll get to in a minute. Okay. But the, the reason Chieftain was good, but not that good, was because it was still a standardized armor package. There was nothing terribly fancy about it. Okay. Hence so... Chobham being with the American tanks. Yeah, okay. Which left Chieftain weighing at a ridiculous 52 to 56 tons. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Um, because the front armor is somewhere on 12 inches of steel. <laughs> so, you know... <laughs> 12 inches at that angle. Yeah, 12 inches at that angle is utterly ridiculous. Yeah, but you're not getting through it. Ch Chieftain had a an uneasy start to its career, and it probably got plagued by the same problem throughout its entire career with the British Army, and that was the engine. 
Right. Uh, if I remember right, it's a Leyland. It's a Leyland. It's a tractor L engine. It's a Leyland L60. Leyland's a truck manufacturer. Uh, well, I've only ever seen Leyland as tractors. Okay. Well, Leyland DAF, as we would probably more know them now. Okay. They built the engines for these things, these Leyland L60s. They were given a spec by the MOD to say, in a possible third world war, there may not be enough fuel supplies. Hmm. So let's build an engine that can run on diesel normally, but if we need it to, can run on anything else that you can stick in the tank. So what, I could throw some vegetable oil into this and let it run? Yeah. Problem okay. was, it didn't do so good for the engine. Yes, you could run it, but you'd only be running it to try and get away from something. Yeah, so this is basically, look, we're out of gas, we're in the middle of the town, raid that supermarket, get me some vegetable oil, let's go home. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, if you could make a, a diesel, a diesel vegetable oil mix that's roughly like 60, 40, yeah. 40 percent being the oil, uh, you could probably get a chieftain to a safe location. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing the, the engines wouldn't be happy after that. No, you have to pull the engine out, chuck it away and put a new one in. That plan. Because when you when you mix when you start mixing different types of oils with fuel, mm. you, it starts to become jelly. Oh. So as you mix the, yeah, as you mix the compounds together, they clog the fuel lines. They can sometimes rot the fuel lines out. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, multi fuel engine, nice idea, not very good in practice. Well, thankfully, we won't have rules for that on the tabletop. No, on the tabletop, these things are mighty. <laughs> these things are beasts. Now, still brew armor. Let me yeah. see. Where are we? Get me a good set of rules for it here. So, still brew armor is an option that can be added for one point. Yeah. Um, for that one point, you are suffering a couple of penalties. Okay. Well, what, what's your what's the good bit of it first? Right. You're going from front armor seventeen to front armor eighteen. That's so you're adding you're adding, you're adding an extra point of armor. Yeah, that's reasonably good. Um, the downsides, however, is your cross check goes up from two plus to three plus. So you're losing a touch of mobility. I'm guessing that's just this big slab of iron on the front. You're you're adding another six odd tons to the, the weight of the thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Makes sense that it's it's more likely to actually bog down whenever trying to go over something. Yeah. And adding that amount of weight to an already fifty plus ton monster that's driving on a two stroke diesel engine. Which two stroke really? Two stroke diesel engine. If I remember right, is it horizontally opposed? So so hang on, hang on. Your standard engine, the the pistons go like this, right? Yes. Horizontally they go, they, opposed, they go, I'm guessing... They go... Uh, each piston has a single cylinder to its engine, yeah. to to the block, yeah. and each piston happily goes up and down that one cylinder on its own happily all day. Yeah. An opposed engine is the spark plug, or the heater plug in a diesel engine, is in the centre of a long cylinder. There's two crankshafts, one at either end, and the pistons move towards each other. So there's two per cylinder. So, hang on. It's basically punching against each other. Yeah. This sounds like a horrible plan. It it worked. Um, the I guess the main reason they went with that sort of engine is to keep the the height of the hull as low as possible. Okay. I say low as possible. It's still high five and a half friggin' feet, but <laughs> it makes it a bit lower profile. Mm. Um, that was the advantage of that. Yeah, but the, I suppose I'm looking at the Sherman behind you, and yeah, it does look as if the side of this thing is really, really low. Yeah, the engine always was a problem with Chieftain and mm. as much as people say that Chieftain improved over the years I would tend to disagree because that engine didn't really change that much it probably got a bit more reliable but mm -hmm. uh, as one veteran I remember listening to which made me chuckle was you could always tell when a Chieftain was on the ra when a Chieftain went out onto the driving range because it was the one sat next to the ARV replacing its engine pack. <laughs> <laughs> They are a good looking tank though. They are. I, ha I have to give it that. It is a good good looking tank. Mm -hmm. It's got smoke for it. Yep. So if you want to throw down some smoke fields you can. And it's got a stabilizer in it as well, which is always a nice tank. So yep. it's it's not quite T seventy two whenever you're rolling around going, Yeah, I'm gonna push it, but I'm gonna be worth shooting here. Well, you are kinda of worth shooting on the move with Chieftain. Right. Uh, Leopards are rate of fire two all the time. Yep. Abrams, rate of fire two all the time. Yep. Chieftain, rate of fire one when it's moving. Ah. Rate of fire two on the on stationary. So artillery are going to have fun with these, making them move, making them less effective. Yeah, that's, that's it's going to be interesting to play. That's with. that's how I would face off against this. Mm -hmm. I would make them move. I'd constantly make them move, get that firepower down as much as possible. Yeah. If that's if that chieftain stayed still for too long, that gunner's got you. <laughs> that yeah, that sort of thing. Well, it's, it's the thing with the artillery. If you stay still and I've ranged in, I don't need to range in again. I can just plant t templates on you all day long. So. Yeah. It's something that players are going to have to watch out for. Mm. It looks like it's going to be an interesting force to play. So mm -hmm. honestly, I can't wait to see it go out on the tabletop. Uh, in fact, tell you what, John, if we, if we get a weekend at some point, 
You take these, I'll take some Russians, and we'll have a good time. Yeah, definitely. All right. All right, well, guys, that is the, the one-player starter set for the British for Team Yankee. Drop your comments below. Are you excited about this new force? Uh, what are you hoping to run with this force? Um, myself and John will move on here. We'll see you in the next video. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com.